Hello and yes, today is the day before the warranty work finally gets done. So we have been waiting now a long, long time for all this work to be complete. What's been the issue? Well, it's been a delay in parts. So it's been a long time for the parts to get sourced from Swift and the, I suppose, the people Swift deal with. So all coming together to the garage um, for us to go down now and get them all done. So this is the day before the work's going to get complete. What I'm hoping to do is get some glimpses within the workshop as jobs are getting done. But beforehand, I'm going to take you around the van, show you all the different parts that have uh, gone wrong um, since we've had the motorhome or after buying the motorhome and what needs correcting. Now there has been one job which I'll point out that has been corrected already. That's because I see it as more of an urgent job and I'll explain why. Um, but as for everything else, um, it's going in tomorrow. They reckon it's going to be done within around three days. I've given the week because we're away the weekend. So I do want it back for Friday, hopefully. Um, we'll see on that one. So uh, before tomorrow comes then, let's go around the van and I'll just show you everything uh, that's that's gone wrong on the van. Um, especially if you're out there looking at a motorhome, second hand or even buying a brand new one you need to snag it these are some of the jobs that may just may go wrong or um, you might be able to point out to the dealer to get fixed before you hand over your hard-earned cash so uh, yeah let's get on it one of the jobs I've pointed out to them is where you've got the sunroof just here you've got a lovely blind net blind and then uh, a cover blind there now the issue I'm getting is on this corner, now you won't be able to pick it up, um, but if I push it down, the clips here pop out of this rail. Rather annoying, and being a new van, I want it corrected where they can, so I think they're gonna have to pop it all out, and I'm not sure if they're replacing the whole blind um, because it started to wear away inside there. Um, however, all I'm doing at the moment is just not fully putting it down and just having it halfway up, just so it don't pop out of the rail and keep catching because it's wearing away on the plastic, which I don't like. So that's one of the things to look out for is making sure all your blinds and your nets um, are working and functioning correctly uh, and not popping out the rail basically. And if they are, get them addressed. We come down to more ground level You've got these doors and now these flaps are basic for the um, passenger seats at the rear. Now, when the seat is up, you open up this flap and that gives you your leg space um, for when you're seated as a passenger. However, the issue is, is the door obviously now keeps flapping open. And that's basically because if you can see under there, the actual um, clip that holds that in place has popped off a few times. Now I have tried to sort of screw it in and glue it on again. However, it just keeps failing. Now I think because it's a walkway, you can put a bit of pressure on there with your legs as you're trying to get around the table. Um, so it, that pressure has obviously just popped it off. Um, but it needs a bit more, something a bit more, um, I suppose, stronger to hold that door in place. Um, that's another job getting sorted. Now the other issue we're getting is the kitchen tap itself. As you can see, it keeps coming loose. Now I've tightened it up many a times, um, but it keeps um, just unthreading itself. And it seems to be getting forced forward and creating a gap at the back of the tap. So obviously anything like water and stuff can fall down. So um, they're gonna look at that just to see what's happening with the thread and get that thread and tap sorted so it don't come loose. Now, I totally understand things can come loose because it's a moving vehicle, um, but not after every trip. So, um, like I say, just another thing to look out for. So just pointing out one job, and I've heard this can be quite a popular thing to, to go on the vans, is the outside air temperature sensor, which I believe was located near the front of the vehicle, was um, it was faulty. So in the summer months when we was in um, Spain or France and we were getting 30 degree temperatures, it was giving me a frost alert saying it was minus 25 outside. Now, this is a job that I pushed for to get done sooner as we was gonna then come in into winter because one, if we're out and about, 
and you hold in 25% or more water in your tanks, then you can use your tank heaters if it drops below a certain temperature to protect your ta tanks. Now, I couldn't trust the system um, if it's always going to constantly drop at 20, minus 25 degrees. So they replaced the sensor um, within that. So when the water tanks now and the sensors all reading correct, uh, that was a quick job actually. It took about five minutes just to actually change that sensor. Probably took about three weeks for the sensor to come in to the garage. Um, but that's another job and that's already been done. But it's just double checking your sensors are working correctly. The door has been a bit of a, a pain, shall we say, um, because the central locking system is a, is a great system if it works. Now, it's located on pins that I'll just about show you. Sometimes I've cleaned the pins up and sometimes then the uh, central locking on the system will work. But it's been a bit hit and miss over winter now. I'm not sure if it's when the van heats up, it expands slightly and goes back into the colder weather. It shrinks, so that's then adjusting where the pins sit and locate, or if it's the pins that are faulty themselves. So, right, to the door. Down the side, okay, you'll see these pins here okay and there's two pins there and then two pins there and as that door shuts then pins locate on there which in theory should create the circuit that circuit then okay will, will operate the uh, central locking when you use the key um, however like I say it's hit and miss now every time I've taken it to the garage the door's been working and this morning coming to the uh, storage yard the door's working so under warranty if it's working then obviously they can't fix it because there's nothing to actually fix so i am thinking we well, gone a bit dark there but i am i am thinking um they have offered that they can hardwire it in so in theory you're just getting away with the pins and the circuit will be a constant circuit to the door um, they said a few people have taken up this option. I don't think it's that expensive, but I don't think it will come under the warranty to get that change done. Now, I could argue the fact that if the pins are constantly going faulty, then surely that's a better option for Swift just to get it hardwired in and it's sorted. Um, and I suppose you have got the other issue of where the cable sits and if, if, if it starts to wear, um, but I can see that being more reliable. I'm not saying I'm having it done just yet, so I'm going to talk to the garage and just find out if it's something I should really go forward with. So there is another thing I've noticed with the door, and it's a recent thing. So it's, um, I suppose, a few weekends ago, and we had a little bit of heat, and it was basically um, heating up this side of the van. But I looked at the door, and you've got this lovely perspex at the front. And don't get me wrong, it's nice. It's nice to look at. However, what I have noticed is just here on both sides, you may be able to see a little gap and just there. So you may be able to see a bit of a gap there. I can even see like a little bit of water, but it looks like some form of sealant is obviously meant to be sealing that. I think the sealant's starting to come away. Now what I don't want to be doing is traveling down the road and then this flies off because behind this then obviously that's going to be just a, a void space that, that water and stuff can get into. Um, and then sourcing this part will probably take months. So I'm going to talk to the garage again tomorrow about looking at that because I think it might need sealing back on. But just another thing, to keep an eye on the door. So they seem to have, don't get me wrong, I love the door, how wide it is. And I think they've done a really good job there, but there's just some little bits on this door that really could have done with improving. So hopefully I can get them improved. So another thing I've noticed, we're coming into the shower now, and it's a lovely space. Uh, I'm really kitted out well, to be fair. However, with moving off the vehicle and stuff like that, this bit here is all come loose. Now apparently there's a bolt behind there and there is a screw head within there, but you have to take this part of the shower off, take that off to get that piece off to then tighten that up. Now, of course I can do all this myself, 
and if the jobs weren't in warranty I would do it myself because you know I'm, I'm a bit hands-on and I wouldn't pay someone to just uh, tighten up that shower but I just wanted to put it in there because it is an extra thing that they will do for the warranty um, and as it's in warranty I may as well get them to do it because then it don't cost me anything no time or, or money uh, within labour of someone doing that so that's that part and I think that's near enough it except for one one big job that's been a big big bugbear and luckily hasn't stopped us traveling but it's the bathroom door okay so when we got the van it's something that I didn't really check for you know and it's the framework the framework around the bathroom itself now this is a walkway um, a walkway through to the living area and obviously behind me into your bathroom and bedroom so it this bit here I suppose can quite easily be knocked now before we had the van maybe the last owners did knock it I don't know uh, and maybe it come loose but over time and driving and stuff like that I noticed that it's starting to chip away here now I have put a laminate thing on there to try and make it look a bit more pretty <laughs> not exactly the same but you can see behind it how it's just pulled away being like a paper compressed cardboard type thing and that's this plinth here and of course in turn it's, it's pulled it out of, of the ceiling so it's made that corner not that strong along with that it's popped it out here so these are different sections and this bit keeps popping out so you can see there it's popped out of them screws yet again and you might be able to see behind it actually now that's fine so that they're waiting for this whole thing this whole thing is getting replaced you can also see at the bottom while i'm here and you'll be able to see that actually you know that's come out from there and i keep pushing it back in obviously it keeps popping back out we've been able to use the van that's great but when you buy a van and spend this much money of course you want everything to be as perfect as it can be we know things go wrong but this shouldn't have happened really now when the garage did inspect it um, there is if you can see there I've just put sort of some electrical tape over the screw heads now what's meant to be there is obviously the same effect as this laminate and you might be able to see there if I get in close enough then there's a round circle of this laminate there so we've got one there one there one there one there and one down at the floor they're just holes so what was done in the factory they've screwed in this side however they were meant to screw in this side as well so you would have had the rigidity I suppose of both sides and the sh it would have been a lot stronger um, but it, they don't they, they just literally covered up them holes and only screwed it in from the one side so of course over time that's fouled they're going to do it properly, the garage uh, I'm using. So I'll be going down to Abacus Motorhomes tomorrow. That's where I'm getting all the work done. And they're going to build all that up again, screwing it in where it needs to be screwed in. So it is going to be tight, secure, uh, and hopefully won't come loose again. That's disappointed me a little bit with on the Swift build. But as for the rest of the quality, I don't care what anyone says and you can all criticise out there because every van has its different issues. But the quality of the van is actually pretty good and I'm happy with majority of the stuff. It's just sometimes you get a bit unlucky with certain things. Certain things get missed within a factory and, um, you know, maybe that got missed at the time. But it is getting corrected so we will see how that goes the sun is shining so i thought i'd come outside for this bit although i am squinting a little bit but there she is tomorrow going in for a warranty job um, like i say keep watching because hopefully i'm going to take you around um, the workshop as into certain things they're doing on the motorhome uh, i can't see a problem with that and then show you the finished um, parts all complete and ready to rock and roll again 
Um, may even take you around one of their vans because they do sell vans as well there. Uh, I'm sure they're going to have a spectacular van to look around and if I've got time I can stick it on this vlog. So on that note then, let's get this into that workshop. So I'm just outside um, Abacus Motorhomes and the van is in. I thought it was actually going to be in for the week, but they reckon today and then I'll have it back. So we can go in and have a little look about and just see, um, see what they've done so far. So, okay. Well, okay, so that's all brand new, which is great. Okay, so look, put little clips on that. But it looks solid. So, so far, so good. Our great service um, yeah they are going to have that out in the day and what I'll do is I'll go through the jobs probably tomorrow with you and um, exactly what's been replaced happy with that good morning it's the next day now I can't believe it's only taken one day uh, well half a day really just to get all the jobs done in the uh, in the motorhome um, really good work from Abacus, the motorhome company down in Andover. And what I'm going to do is just show you a few things they've, they've done. There's still some things that are outstanding. Uh, I'll point them out as we go through. First thing I want to point out though is the door. So I showed them this part of the door there. And yes, that is a part that they've seen foul before. So what they've said to me is it gets put in now with Swift because obviously I've only informed them yesterday. That gets put in with Swift under the warranty and from what they're saying it'll be a complete new door. Now that puts me in a little bit of a dilemma because the motorhome has been completely ceramic coated so I may have to give um, Richard a call at PP Protect just to find out the best way of um, what to do about it really. So do we get the door ceramic coated again? Do we get the whole motorhome touched up and um, stuff like that? or would the door be okay just to be left? I don't know. I don't want a color difference on the motorhome, etc. So when that comes in, which is, let's be fair, it's gonna be some time from now. I can't see that coming in very quickly. Um, but yeah, it may mean I have to get the door ceramic coated again. However, you know, I'd rather that uh, have a new door than, than the uh, Perspex falling off. Personally, I would have thought they'd just seal the Perspex back on. So I might have to talk to the garage just to see if that's something I do in the meantime. Um, why I'm waiting for the door, just so I don't get water ingress or anything like that. So it's a little bit cold, so I am going to keep my jacket on while I'm in here. But I'll start off with the blind. So the blind, they did actually look at the blind. Um, however, there's not much they said they can do. I just have to make sure it does not fall down and foul on there. So when I pull it up, I just keep it over and then pull it up. Um, I was kind of hoping the end of the, the clip there would be, be replaced, but um, no, um, they've greased it all up for me with dry silicon and stuff like that. So it does move nice and freely, um, which is great. Yeah, so that's a job that now I'll have to just keep monitoring. 
So there is another job they did do for me um, that wasn't on the list and that's the sunroof. They've greased up all the rails and everything and all the mechanism for it lifting, which is great because um, it was starting to stick a bit. So they've just put silicon and stuff on that. So that's good to go. Kitchen tap, that's all in place. That's great now. Um, along with the, the shower, that's all done and fixed in properly. So that's a good job, well done. So as you can see down there, then they have got that bracket back on, but I don't know if you can see behind the bracket, there is a bit of, I suppose, there, there was extra holes. So there was extra holes drilled in. Um, so they have ordered me a new panel um, for that bracket to fit on. So that's one thing extra now that, that is on order as well, along with the door, that's that panel there. Um, so that leaves it to the last thing we needed doing, which was the big job, and that was the surround where the bathroom door is. So let's check that out. As you can see from this side of the bathroom door, everything's now looking good. Okay, but that weren't really the problem. It was really because it was loose, but it is solid, I would say. We go on to this side. They've put in the new plinth, which is great. And I believe all the surround to here. So it now fits in place perfectly. One panel that was missing then is this panel here. So what they've had to do because of the fixings were damaged is put their own fixings in and then they've put this plastic um, cap over the top of the fixings and that's on every one of them. So they have reordered that panel. So all in all, it's two panels and one door still on order. So they will have to readdress that and look at that again. So let's shut this door. So it now shuts, there's no gaps and it's solid. So with that, we are happy with that for now um, until that other panel comes in and then that can get replaced as well. The workmanship from Abacus is actually great. They're good guys there. It's a clean workshop if you, as you've seen. Um, and very professional. Another thing to point out is they do do the vehicle side maintenance as well, so services and stuff like that, but that's in a different part of their workshop over the other side. Um, within that side there, it's very, I suppose, um, benign, clean environment for your motorhome, and that's where they work on the habitation side in there, uh, along with the sales, the rental side, that's all that side. And that's Abacus, the motorhome company in Andover. So thanks guys for that um, and look forward to working with you again when you get the other panels and, and that door. That's it from me then. Hopefully that's been of some use to you. If it's in warranty, um, make sure you do a snagging list probably once a year, something like that, unless it's something that's urgently needed to be done. Um, get everything on that list and get it booked in to get your warranty work done. Just a point to note on warranty work, if you do get the jobs in before your warranty expires, they'll still honour it, even if the parts are delayed, because some parts do take time to come through the system. Once the parts are in, usually pretty much an easy fix, one for one fix, um, and that's them done. So me and Jody are gonna see you on the next vlog, next Thursday at half five. Um, and we will gonna be, we're gonna be somewhere on the Jurassic West Coast, um, up high, hopefully not too windy, but it's going to have spectacular views. So thank you again to everyone that's supporting the channel. And until the next time, bye.